Hi, I'm Tom Hendrickson from the Agile Online Summit, where we bring great Agilists to the world. In this session, we're going to talk about building high-performance teams. Do you have imposters? With Navardi Jaram. Navardi, introduce yourself to the people here at the Agile Online Summit. Hi, everyone. So I'm Navardi Jairam, uh, currently with Societe General, one of the biggest European banks uh, as head of transformation. And I have about seven years been with Agile and I'm also an ICF accredited coach. Uh, apart from being a United Nations peacekeeper uh, as part of my earlier career. So looking forward to the summit, uh, Tom. Excellent. Well, it's great to have you on the summit again this year, Navardi. Same here. Thank you. So we want to start off and we're starting everyone off with this same question. And I think it's a, a good one that we can all kind of reflect on where our journey is. We've been through, you know, many things with Agile, but, you know, we've come a long way since the Agile Manifesto. So what would you say, Navardi, is our biggest success and our biggest failure? Uh, the biggest success, I think, I think is more on uh, the organizations uh, moving to Agile at uh, more of a team level. Uh, and, and one thing which we can do definitely better is moving them at an enterprise level. So we are quite successful when it comes to teams and probably till the tribes, but when you want to integrate it uh, beyond that to achieve organizational agility or enterprise agility, I think that's one of the uh, challenges. I wouldn't call a failure, but yes, I think we could definitely do much better in, in that space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of people are trying to do that. So it's a, <laughs> it's a big problem or a big challenge, I guess we'll say it that way. Yes, I think it's a big challenge and, and it's an opportunity as well that, okay, you, you see that a lot of emphasis uh, is now on business agility and organizational agility. And you also have other elements like technical agility coming in. So uh, I think we are covering all, all bases, you know, with these uh, different models and frameworks coming through and, and we would definitely be there soon. Yeah. So today though, Navardi, you want to talk to us about building high performance teams. Do you have imposters? So first off, why don't you tell us how do we create high performing teams? Yes, I, th I think uh, for me, the topic is very relevant today because we are all talking about agile transformation in the sense of uh, high creating high performance organizations, right? And, and organizations are made of people and teams. So that is why I feel this topic is very relevant in today's world, right? So uh, as far as uh, the point about creating high performance teams, I think it's, it's, it puts a lot of emphasis on leadership, on how you create high performance teams. For that, uh, essentially we should look at teams which are smaller, that is 10 or less, which of course is advised uh, for agile team composition as well and provide a clear vision to the team on, on what they are out to achieve, which means we are talking about a style of leadership, which is more a catalyst or transformative style of leadership, and also provide empowerment to the teams to be autonomous. So that's also is kind of a leadership where you, you kind of let go of your command and control instincts and let the team decide on how they want to achieve, you define the why and what, and let the team define the how. It's also important to build trust with the team. So uh, I would like to refer here to the trust equation that we talk about. If you want to build trust, you need to present credibility, you need to create reliability as well and intimacy with the team. And most importantly, you need to take out focus on yourself. So it's not easy to build trust and without trust, you can't create uh, you know, high performing teams. And also most importantly, we need to focus on the team and its dynamics. And that is where the topic comes in that if you have some imposters in your team, then it's definitely not possible to create those high performing teams, which means we don't essentially end up creating high performing organizations. So I guess, why is it important to find those imposters first off? 
Yes, so uh, I think before that, just it, it's important to define what is in an imposter or what is an imposter syndrome. Sure. Yes. Right? So, uh, it's just that, you know, there are elements in people where uh, they lack self-confidence, which means they always feel that they are not as good as everybody thinks they are. And, and they will be found out any, any day, any, any time. And which means they are not confident about who they are. And that reflects in how they perform within a team. So this is very important. If you want to create a high performing teams, you need everybody in the team to be contributing, confident and accountable and committed to the cause, the goals, the vision, the objectives of the organization. If not, then you are creating a, a a big imbalance in the team. So you, when you have that and you, you need to identify those imposters, what, what can happen on a team that maybe has one or too many of them, I guess? What are some of the, the challenges you might see if maybe you're a scrum master or you're a coach? Absolutely. I think the impact is, is pretty big because the value proposition of the team is, is very uh, low because you can't commit yourself to a certain goal. You don't know whether you would be able to achieve it or not with these imposters, which means the predictability of the team and how they deliver comes down. And, and the mutual trust that you want within all the team members is lost. And the team engagement definitely comes down, which means you don't have a happy team and not a so happy team does not perform. To its full potential. So I guess as an imposter, I guess one of the things I wanted to ask about, I know I've heard a lot of people talk about imposter syndrome, but does that um, start with, was it Brene Brown or was someone else working on that before her? Or do you know, I mean, I've heard some different people talk about it, but I'm not sure if that's where I, it starts or. I, I, I have heard a couple of, uh, more than a couple of people talking about this, but one thing I could refer or where I started to look at uh, uh, and relate to it because it might have been my experience, but I could get to the uh, nomenclature or the or the word of being an imposter was first from uh, uh, the coach's case book by uh -huh. Jeff Watts, mm -hmm. right? So that's where I first uh, heard about the word called imposter. So that's mm -hmm. where I, I related to that. But the experience goes long before that we see, we've been seeing that probably uh, from our early age. So I've been working for more than 30 years now. So what does Jeff say in his book about handling imposters? Yes, so it's, it's very important. Uh, I mean, and also he talks about uh, the, the elements that you can look at being a scrum master as, or a coach. Right? First thing is to create that awareness most of the times they don't understand that they are the imposters or they, they are behaving that way. Mm -hmm. So it's important to create that awareness, which means as a scrum master, as a coach, you need to be closely engaged with the team. You need to be observant in the retros. You need to be observant on how the team is performing, who is contributing, who is speaking in uh, you know, standups, who is not speaking those elements need to be closely looked at uh, by a scrum master or a coach. And, and he, you know, once you have created that awareness, then it's all about creating acceptance that they are good. They are good, as good as everybody thinks they are. For that, there could be multiple, uh, you know, elements you could use. You could use a Johari window of, great tool to use. You could also use a 360 degree feedback. You know, uh, you know, Jeff talks about 555 rule means where you identify the five uh, best friends or best people he believes in who would give a right feedback and he has confidence on them. So you could also go for a 360 degree feedback. So which means you are looking at your peers, your superiors and your subordinates and that gives a positive reinforcement to those individuals that they are not imposters, they are actually good, right? And, and, and 
after that i think it's very important in this process to have close one to one conversations with those people and there could be two types of imposters sam actually so he talks about the person who is good enough but he is not confident that he is that good right but there is also another element which i come across from my experience that there are people who are actually not good enough as good enough as they make themselves out to be right so there are both sides so these these things do help on both people and the best thing that i have seen in my experience is using journaling as a mechanism which means mm -hmm. every day you come back you put in what you have contributed to the, to the team how you have been successful in doing so which gives a great reflection point on your contributions your value that you bring to the table and and that positive continuous reinforcement mm -hmm. makes you after a certain point in time to flip over and become a high performing individual as well so are you saying then each individual team member would journal like daily is that is that what you're suggesting or how do you uh, if you have identified a uh, an imposter so i would encourage him to look at journaling because he needs to understand what he is contributing to the team mm -hmm. on daily basis so how he has been performing what goals objectives he has chosen how much he has achieved that continuous reinforcement and positivity will change his understanding of who he is and and that will definitely help whole team to come out of it okay and these these um techniques that you have outlined work for someone who's an imposter but then you also talked about kind of the opposite of an imposter so those will work for both types yes it would because it would give you a reflection of who you are mm -hmm. irrespective of which category you fall into right so you may be thinking i am the biggest achiever in the team but yeah. the 360 degree feedback gives you that boss you are only a talker not doer <laughs> right yes, yes. <laughs> so that's like showing the mirror mm -hmm. that okay you are not as good as probably you think you are mm -hmm. and and journaling also helps those kind of people because it's it's easy to talk but when you want to put your pen down and uh, reflect and this is from experience and you are an author as well when we want to speak on a topic we might be able to speak uh, hours together when you want to write even a paragraph it takes days and probably weeks yes yes right so mm -hmm. because we go through a lot of uh, reflection and we need uh, to convince ourselves that what we are putting through is authentic and and is right so when you journal it's very difficult to put the wrong thing out mm -hmm. believe me i have that experience yeah So you talked about a few things there. One thing I want to come back to you you talked about 360 feedback, you talked about the 555. Talk to us about the Jahari window. I don't think we just kind of went over that. I just want to make sure everybody knows what that means and what that is. Yeah, Jahari window is a is a very great tool and it has several elements into it, right? So Jahari window talks about four quadrants. So one of the quadrant is about you know what you know about yourself mm -hmm. or your strengths and what others know too which means there might be some strengths that you identify yourself with and others also identify those strengths in you mm -hmm. which is visible right so that is was first quadrant then you talk about what strengths you think you have which others don't think you have or they don't realize you have Yeah. which means you are not exhibiting those strengths for them to see them but you have them which means you are not realizing your full potential right so that is the second one and the mm -hmm. third quadrant says what strengths others see in you which you don't see this is a great reflection point means which you don't know that this is your strength but others see that these are also your strengths and the last one is what you don't know and others don't know which is more of a 
you know absolute uh, uh, block point mm -hmm. but you will discover a lot of blind spots when you go through this door window and and you will there are three elements to it one you will understand what are the strengths that you have and you are not essentially using in your day to day activities mm -hmm. that so that others could look into it and feel and and are able to identify you with them right mm -hmm. and the other thing is the others are able to identify certain strengths which you are exhibiting but you are not which means you are not fully aware fully conscious about what your strengths are so when these elements are identified they tend to understand their complete picture of what their strengths are and where they can use them that makes them realize their full potential wow yeah that's really good one one more thing here as we kind of look through this whole um, presentation and a lot of what you've talked about here, but to come back to creating that awareness, what are some things that we, maybe we're a coach, maybe we're a scrum master, maybe we're just part of a team, but what are some things that we can help kind of create that awareness, that space where people become aware? What are some things? Yeah. I think that's an impo very, very important question as well, right? So when you are a coach, it, it's important first to for you to identify that that person is an imposter, right? He's, he has very high caliber, but he doesn't believe that what he is. And, and that comes from you being present physically, mentally, emotionally in the conversations that are happening. And also look for any hippo effects that somebody wanting to speak, but is not being allowed to speak, right? So those elements, once you understand and identify, it's, there can be two, three elements that you can take care of. One, have one-on-one -on -one conversations which are more around coaching. So where you kind of ask, okay, we have gone through this deliverable. What is your contribution in it, right? What do you think you added as value? Now, when he, when he or she starts talking about it there will be some awareness created right through the coaching conversation that could be one and number two if he does not come out or she does not come out with uh, or identify his contribution him being a scrum master or coach he can always come back and reflect okay you delivered this user story or num these user stories and this is the value i see you bring in challenge put that mirror in front and let them realize, mm -hmm. right? So this is a great tool to use that one-on-one -on -one conversations. And then also if the team is very comfortable in and wants to empower him to realize his potential, you can ask the team to start praising or appreciative inquiry is another element that we could bring in. So when you want to make an inquiry, it could be done two ways. You could do it in a way you are appreciating a person or you're ridiculing a person, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very important that you teach people to do appreciative inquiry than being ridiculous. Yeah. So that is another element. When you do an appreciative inquiry, okay, I see that you are doing an excellent job. What is that value that you are bringing in with your excellent job or with these many uh, user stories that you delivered? So that will take out that nervousness or the feeling of uncomfortability that is always there in these imposters to talk about themselves or even look into their contributions in a team. Yes, yes. Well, Navardi, you shared a lot with us in this session. Do you have any closing thoughts? Uh, I would say that this is one of the elements that's not seriously looked into, even though it has been there you know, long time. I think it's in the process of us looking to transform organizations, which should consist of high performing teams. It's very important that we take care of the imposters and help them realize their full potential. If not, what will happen is it creates a lot of frustration and loss of trust within the team, which means the high performing individuals will start leaving the organization, yeah. right? So I think it's a very important element uh, to be addressed, uh, uh, Tom. That's the reason I just thought to bring it out. 
Yes, and I appreciate you sharing that with us. I think this is a very good topic that, like you mentioned, probably a lot of people don't think about, but it has an effect on those teams, whether they become that high-performing team or not. So thanks for joining us today, Nabardi. Thank you, Tom. Thanks for the opportunity. It's been a pleasure. We hope you're enjoying the Agile Online Summit. To gain lifetime access to this great content, make sure you upgrade to VIP tickets. I'm Tom Henriksen for the Agile Online Summit.